Ah, oh, I'm thirsty. Man, have you ever wanted a thing, but the thing's over there, and you're over here? I got a solution for you. The get me thing in here. What? The get me the thing in here. Joystick? No, it's a get me the thing in here. It'll get you your thing. Oh, awesome. Thank you. I'm Gers. And I'm Gers. He's an engineer. He's not. In this video, we're gonna build a claw machine that fills a whole room. So we never have to leave the couch again. We left the couch already. <laughs> The carriage is the most important part of the machine. Every other part of the machine is supporting the carriage. The carriage consists of a couple different components like the gear reduction, the drum for lifting and lowering the claw, and the claw itself. Livy, Livy, wake up! Come on, get up! I've got it! In order to keep the cabling to a minimum, we decided to go with a passive claw. This means that in order for the claw to open, gravity must force the claw to open. We found it worked a lot better after we added some weight to the claw. Ordering things direct from China is always an adventure. This claw arrived in about 100 pieces with no real instructions. It took a small miracle, but we managed to put it together. In the end, the claw we chose worked okay-ish, but it looks great. Looks are what really matters. This project required a lot of 3D printed parts. This is our favorite filament. It's Silk Neon Green PLA from Overture. Big thanks to Overture for sending us some filament. I left my hat over there. All I used to get me the thinginator. Motors typically have low torque and high RPM. We can design a gearbox that'll take the high RPM input from the motor shaft and gear it down to a manageable speed, and by doing so, we'll increase the torque output. That torque is needed to move the different sections of the Get Me That Thinginator. Now that we have the gearbox converting the high RPMs from the motor to more torque, we need to get that motor to move different sections of the machine. So we got four motors, two, going this direction that'll move these things up and down, the big long aluminum pipes that way. We've got this motor that's going to mount to this thing to move it back and forth along here. And then we've got a motor here that's going to be in control of the claw, bringing it up and dropping it down. So we've got to take two wires from each of these motors back to what's going to be our motor controller box. Once we put the motor wires in here, and put power to it, we can start. Doot, 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 doot. This is a timing belt. The timing belts have tiny little teeth on them. Timing pulleys also have teeth on them that match up with the timing belt. These teeth act just like teeth on gears. And when the pulley spins, the teeth engage and the belt moves. Unless you don't want it to, just like how we designed this system. We switched it up so that the belt is fixed and the motor pulleys climb along the belt. Checkmate! <laughs> to control the claw machine, we used these arcade style controls. We're using these in another cool project you'll get to see soon. This joystick is made up of four buttons, one for each direction. When you push the stick, it presses one of the buttons. To raise and lower the claw, we added a couple more buttons. To translate those button presses into motor movements, we used a couple of H-Bridge motor controllers. If you're not familiar with what an H-Bridge is, stick around and we'll explain a little more about what they do before the end of the video. 
We whipped up a simple box for the joystick and the buttons and used some ribbon cable to make a nice neat connection from the controller to the H bridges in the power box. For this project, we used simple DC motors. With these kinds of motors, if you put positive on one tab and negative on the other, the motor spins. If you flip the wires so the positive and negative are swapped, then the motor spins in the other direction. That's what an H bridge does. It switches the polarity of the power wires without actually moving the wires, so the motor can spin in either direction. When a button on the controller is pressed, it sends 5 volts to one of the control pins on the H bridge. Depending on which pin gets the 5 volts, the H bridge switches which of the wires going to the motor is positive or negative, and that determines which direction the motor spins. A project is never really finished until it has a proper name. What do you guys think we should name it? Let us know in the comments. The name that gets the most likes will be immortalized on the device, along with the name of the person that thought of it. We'll let you guys know who won in the next video. We're done? <laughs> Way too hard. <laughs>